So with less than a month away from the Iowa caucus, Bernie Sanders is very clearly changing his electoral strategy and he is implementing a technique that um, I've been wanting him to use for months now. He's attacking. <laughs> he's going after Joe Biden and, you know, he's not just thoughtlessly attacking him. He's being, I think, really sophisticated in the way he approaches, you know, a negative uh, discussion about Joe Biden. And he's being realistic. Joe Biden is not someone who's the most electable about Donald Trump. And I recently made the case when we talked about Bernie's surge that we have to really hammer away at the fact that Bernie Sanders, not Joe Biden, is the most electable and that Joe Biden really is susceptible to all of Donald Trump's attacks that worked on Hillary Clinton. He's vulnerable, right? We risk losing to Donald Trump in the event Joe Biden is the nominee, but yet you have a lot of voters still, you know, basing their support on Joe Biden primarily because they believe he's the safest choice going up against Donald Trump. But our duty now is to educate them and let them know that Joe Biden actually is a risky bet. You're gambling with him. We just ran a moderate four years ago, and if we do it again, we're not going to get a different result. Most likely, Joe Biden will lose. It's not a foregone conclusion. Nobody is. But if we want the best chance to beat Donald Trump, we have to, you know, excite the base. And the only person who can do that is Bernie Sanders. So thankfully, not only is he going on the offensive, but he is arguing against Biden's electability and making the case for himself, which is something that now is a really important thing to do. So, I mean, even though I've been pushing him to, you know, attack Biden and hit him hard, it seems like Bernie Sanders was waiting for the right time to strike. And a month before Iowa, maybe he just feels like this is the time to strike. But regardless, I think it's important. And what he said here in an interview with Anderson Cooper on CNN was incredibly important and crucial because people who only watch mainstream media, they're now only hearing this for the first time. Because, I mean, if you tune into indie media, you know that we don't believe Joe Biden is very electable right? But mainstream news consumers, they don't hear that. They've never really thought. They've just heard that, you know, Joe Biden is the most electable. So they haven't really thought about this thoroughly. But when Bernie Sanders paints this picture for them about what a Trump versus Biden, you know, general election would look like, I think it really will hopefully wake people up. Take a look. Uh, you said recently about Vice President Biden, uh, uh, his record, you said to the Washington Post, quote, it's just a lot of baggage that Joe takes into a campaign, which isn't going to create energy and excitement. Um, is there something specifically you were referring to in terms of baggage? Sure. I mean, look, I, Joe and I are friends, and, and I truly like Joe. But what is imperative is that we defeat Trump, the most dangerous president in modern history. And that means you're going to have to have a huge voter turnout. You're going to have to get working people excited. You're going to have to get young people excited. Joe Biden voted and helped lead the effort for the war in Iraq, the most dangerous foreign policy blunder in the modern history of this country. Joe Biden voted for the disastrous trade agreements like NAFTA and permanent normal trade relations with China, which cost us millions of jobs. You think that's going to play well in Michigan or Wisconsin or Pennsylvania? You know, Joe Biden has been on the floor of the Senate uh, talking about the need to cut Social Security or Medicare or Medicaid. Uh, Joe, Bi Joe Biden uh, pushed a bankruptcy bill, which has caused enormous financial problems for working families. So if we're going to beat Trump, we need turnout. And to get turnout, you need energy and excitement. And I just don't think that that kind of record is going to bring forth the energy that we need to defeat Trump. So that is incredibly important, and my only recommendation to Bernie Sanders is to create ads and run those types of ads, you know, explaining all these horrible things that Joe Biden did and how Trump will use them against him in states like, you know, New Hampshire, South Carolina, Nevada. In fact, I would prioritize Nevada and South Carolina because his ground game in Iowa and New Hampshire currently, I think that will suffice, but he has a lot of ground to make up in South Carolina and he's still falling behind in um, Nevada. So if you really show to voters that Joe Biden is a risk and he probably won't be able to excite the base enough to get out the vote, 
then I think maybe you can change some minds. Now, it, I think that there's going to be a number of Joe Biden supporters that will be loyal to him because they just are more centrist, ideologically speaking. But a lot of people, they're just casual consumers of, you know, uh, political news. They don't necessarily follow it too closely. I think that we can get some of them. Like, we're not going to be able to convert a lot of Joe Biden supporters, but for people who are primarily basing their decision to support Joe Biden on electability, I do believe we can get a lot of those people. And I think a substantial portion of Biden's base of support is comprised of people specifically supporting him because they think, well, you know what? I just want to get Trump out of office, and I think Biden is our best bet. We have to wake those people up and make them see that we're playing a dangerous game. You're rolling the dice. You're gambling, you know, with your fate. And we've got to get Trump out. Now, I was actually surprised at how many things Bernie Sanders decided to bring up. The vote for the Iraq war. Uh, the trade deals. How do you think that's going to play in Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania? Uh, the bankruptcy bill. He talked about how Biden wants to cut Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. Brilliant. This is incredibly important because that's how you convert people who are older. Because, you know, aside from that electability myth that people are, you know, basing their support of Biden on, there's also a generational divide. Let's face it. Older people don't like Bernie Sanders, but they love Biden. Younger people love Bernie Sanders, but dislike Biden. So we also need to try to convert over older voters. Um, and if they know that he most likely will team up with Republicans to cut Social Security. That's another way you get them to jump ship and support Bernie Sanders, who has, you know, vociferously said, I will not cut Social Security. In fact, we've got to expand Social Security, lift the, the cap on taxable income. So this is really important. And I'm so thankful that Bernie Sanders is finally, you know, explaining to people, educating them that Joe Biden is not the most electable. Now, on top of that, we have this from Robert Costa in the Washington Post, who writes, Sanders also cast Biden as part of the political elite, cozy with Wall Street and unable to confront major financial institutions because of his record, such as his support for the bank bailout in 2008. People are tired of the traditional types of campaigns in which candidates like Joe Biden are running to wealthy people's homes and raising large sums of money, Sanders said. Again, really important. We're still in an anti-establishment era in American politics. So doing you know, business as usual, all of these private fundraisers in the Hamptons with elites, that isn't going to suffice. And the media isn't going to talk about this. So it's incumbent on candidates like Bernie Sanders and also commentators like myself to point out that if you truly want representation, if you want someone who's going to fight for you, you can't vote for someone who's doing fundraisers in the Hamptons, probably promising rich people not only positions in his administration, but promising them policy concessions, or at least to fight for them. You know, this is the way that politics works. There's this cozy relationship with the elites, and then you vote in a politician and they do nothing, and then when you look at who gave to their campaign and who they associated with, oh, you see, it makes sense. You know, we didn't vet Obama in 2008. I didn't vet Obama. That was the first time I was old enough to vote and I voted for Obama, and I thought that he would actually bring about true change, but I wasn't paying attention to all of the money that he was raising from Wall Street, right? So we have to make sure that people know about these kinds of things, and candidates have got to educate voters about this, and Bernie Sanders is now carrying out the right strategy. He's saying pretty bluntly, you know, Joe Biden is not your best bet. If electability is what you care about, you are making a mistake to go with Joe Biden. So effectively, what Bernie Sanders is communicating to voters here is that Joe Biden is going to lose to Donald Trump. That's basically what he's trying to say. Because all Trump has to do is run as a pseudo-populist once again. And I think that people are going to uh, not necessarily buy it, but believe what Trump says about Joe Biden. So what we need is an excited base, as Bernie Sanders said, who will come out and vote for Joe Biden. If you're someone who's, you know, on the fence about voting because you live in a state with voter ID laws and you work, so you're not going to have time to stand in line and vote for Joe Biden. You know, if you hear Donald Trump say that he's cozy with elites and he supports all of these trade deals that sends jobs overseas, do you think that as a self-interested voter, you're going to take the time to come out and vote for Biden? Of course not. We saw how this played out in 2016 with Hillary Clinton. So we don't even need to go through these hypothetical situations with Joe Biden versus Donald Trump. We've seen what happens when you run a moderate against Donald Trump. 
he wins. So Bernie here is making a powerful case against this myth that Joe Biden is the most electable. Nobody is a foregone conclusion, but if we truly want a good chance of beating Trump, Bernie is the safest bet, not Joe Biden. Joe Biden would most likely lose to Donald Trump.